got behind this car the other day and the bumper sticker said salad question mark exclamation mark that's what my food eats another one said i did not climb tooth and nail to the top of the food chain to be a vegetarian and i've seen another one at a different location say vegetarian is an old indian word for bad hunter all these signs are communicating what they are against they are against vegetarians Think about that. Is is that what you want people to know you for? Are we as Christians communicating, we are against this, we are against that, we are against this? How about what we are for? How about instead of saying, oh, I hate this, I hate this, I hate that. I just want everybody to know I love gays. I love sinners. I love drunks. I love gluttons. I love everyone that sins. I love the person. So with that, Let's jump into prayer time right now. Lord, we jump in with both feet. We just want, we want to be plunged into your spirit. We want the fullness of your love to be with us today. In Jesus' name, we pray that our hero will be filled with the Holy Spirit today. We pray that their day will be the best day possible, that they will continually look forward to a brighter and and more hopeful future lord that they will not look into the future and see and see doom and gloom like satan wants to tell us about that our future is just it's just going to get worse it's not going to get any better lord you give us a hope every message that has hope lord is a message that comes from you and every message of doom and gloom is a message straight from the pit of hell so we bind that in, in jesus name we say no to the devil and a loud yes to god and we thank you god for what you have done in our lives thank you lord that you have gotten us to this plateau that you have gotten us to this step on a ladder lord you are getting us closer i pray that every single day lord is one step up the ladder one step up the ladder monday is one step up a ladder tuesday is one step up a ladder every day lord we have discipline lord yes lord it's so hard especially in our western culture for discipline especially in my life Lord, I just pray for discipline, just the discipline to read your word, to pray, to eat right, to exercise, Lord. I just prophesy discipline over my life. I prophesy discipline over our heroes, Lord. I just pray that every day, Lord, that we are closer to you. Lord, we just prophesy presence, just your presence in our life, Lord. We just want to soak and just rest and just soak you up and just be filled with your presence, Let every day that we are on this earth be full of meaning and purpose. We prophesy meaning and purpose over our heroes, Lord. Show them their destiny. Lord, you have placed us on this earth to accomplish your goals. You have placed me on this earth to clearly communicate the gospel. And that's what I'm doing right now, Lord. I am leading our heroes into prayer. And I just pray that you will, that we will go deeper in a deeper relationship with you, Lord. I just pray for our heroes in the relationships with their spouses, Lord. I just pray that there will be a deep and meaningful relationship, that it won't just be uh, life as usual, just the hurry and scurry, Lord. I just pray that we will get everything out of our lives, all the clutter, and that we will just... Lord, we will get all the clutter out of our lives and that we will continually focus on the one most meaningful thing lord which is you serving you we thank you god for for all that you have done we thank you lord that we are the victors not the victims we thank you that you have overcome lord i just pray that you will give us the the wep- the weapons of our warfare are not flesh and blood but you will give us the weapons the, the sword of the spirit lord that you will give us the word and and you will bring the right things to our mind. And you can only do that if we memorize it in the first place. And that goes back to the discipline, Lord. So I just pray that that you will give us the discipline to memorize so that we will have the sword of the Spirit so that we will be able to engage the enemy who (laughs) comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We pray all of these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Are you still there? Do you hear God? He wants to talk to you. He wants to be your king. He wants to be your lover. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but 
the relationship between a man and wife and like getting married and all that stuff that's kind of what this whole salvation thing is all about it's like <laughs> i can't say it without it sounding cheesy but it's it's a love relationship with god the god of the universe created you he loves you so much that he died on the cross for you so that he could be with you forever in in eternity in heaven it's a big party in the sky we explained it to my son my oldest son when he was younger and I remember he, he took that. He remembered that because he came back later and asked us a question. He's like, Mom, Dad, when we get up to heaven and the big party in the sky, what's it going to be like? <laughs> it was so amazing that he remembered that. But but the more I realize this whole Christian life thing, this whole Christianese thing, this whole walk with God thing, it 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 seems to follow the path, the um, the correlation between husband and wife so perfectly the more I get closer to God the more I get closer to my spouse to my wife so I invite you right now what what is keeping you what hindrance like logically what logical barrier is keeping you from getting saved right now there's there's always something that's like oh you know, I'm 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 in the party mode right now. Like when I do such and such, then I'll get right with God. What if that day never comes? What if you get in a car wreck? What if anything? What if you don't wake up in the morning? What would it hurt? I mean, honestly, <laughs> what would it hurt? Okay, you give yourself to God. What's the worst thing that happens? What's the worst thing? It it's a fraud. It's a fake. It's it's not real. I'm just lying to you and. And uh, you can hear the pin drop because there's no there's no loud applause because there's no it's just silence and and um, it's just life goes on as usual is what I'm trying to communicate. So life goes on as usual. Okay, you've lost absolutely nothing. So why not give it a try? But what do you choose to gain? I always talk about the risk versus reward and so many of my decisions in life. Okay, so the, you risk nothing basically. The reward, what you have to gain. It's everything, your entire life, the life itself you and the afterlife. All of this life has more meaning and purpose because you're living it for God instead of for yourself. And you have to gain all of this life and the life to come. I wish that I could make this decision for you. I wish that I could communicate this, implore you. I implore you right now. I wish that I could force you, if you will, but... The, God is a gentleman. He's he's going to quietly knock on the door of your heart. If you say no, then he's not going to force himself. He can't force you to love him. Love is the supreme ethic. And love cannot exist without a choice. Because if God forced us to love him, we'd just be these robots that serve him. But he wants a real relationship. Just like a romance. And sorry if I'm getting all touchy feely because it's not it's not all touchy feely because it's it's weird. It's this mixture, especially from a guy's from my perspective. This is my take on the whole thing. It is touchy feely in one sense, but yet at the same time, God is like the most hero, like the strongest character, the strongest leader military leader that i can think of so it's kind of both this and that it's kind of love relationship and toughness and if there's anything that i want to communicate to you that's that's this that god loves you he has a plan for you and even if you choose now not to accept jesus he still loves you till the day you die